Because often, what, because often what you would see is when they discuss the gold standard, they would put the gold standard under fixed exchange rates. So the gold standard would be one example of fixed exchange rates, and that would be right alongside things like fiat currencies created by a world bank. There would be um, a, a fiat currency uh, in, in, in the uh, view of Keynes and some of the, the later Keynesians, which would be issued by a world bank, and then individual currencies would be tied to that world currency by fixed exchange rates. So the gold standard was there, and then on the other side was fluctuating exchange rates, uh, and those were, were a system in which different national currencies fluctuated in value value against one another. Of course, this is um, not satisfactory. The key difference is that between a market supplied money or commodity money whose supply and demand is anchored in the market and a money whose supply is monopolized by uh, the political authority, be it through its central bank or, or directly through the, uh, the government. So the best systems from the, from the point of view of, of, of Austrians, if, we're, if we're, we're, we're using as our standard satisfaction of consumer wants and, and the ability of, of entrepreneurs to calculate, is the um, market supply commodity monies, okay, and then things get progressively worse until we get to a world central bank. So having said that, we know, as, as Professor Engelhardt has, has told us, that all money originated uh, and must have originated, logically, as commodity money. So all money came onto the market, uh, all general media of exchange, as some sort of a commodity. But we have the most information about the classical gold standard. Now, how do we know whether, whether something is really a, a genuine gold standard or not? A genuine gold standard, such as the classical gold standard, and unlike the Bretton Woods false, false or phony gold standard, the mark of, of, the, of the genuine gold standard is that gold coins are actually in circulation. They're used in everyday circulation. It, it's not necessary that, that there they're, um, be 100% reserves, though that is better. But, but, but almost from the start, when money originated, uh, governments began to interfere. So it's very hard to find a pure commodity money operating in history. So we'll stick with what we know best. We'll stick with sort of a slightly watered down version of, of, of a pure commodity money, the classical gold standard. And we'll compare it, or actually rather, not really compare, I mean, we'll compare a little bit at the end. We'll show the step-by-step -step process by which the gold standard was deliberately really destroyed by, by governments. That's Mises' big point. The gold standard did not fail. It was deliberately destroyed by governments. So what, what were the main characteristics of, of the gold standard? Um, the monetary unit was defined as the weight of gold. I'll, talk, I'll give you an example of that a little bit later on. So that really gold and nothing else was money. Gold was the base money. It was the bank reserves and it was the currency in circulation. Nothing else was, was, was considered money proper, as Mises would use the term. Anything else that circulated as, uh, as a medium of exchange was a money substitute. So banknotes and deposits, to the extent that they existed, were instantaneously redeemable into gold at par or at face value, and they were the money substitutes. So gold coin circulated alongside money substitutes, were real, which were really, as we'll see, just claims to gold held by banks. Finally, it was not necessary under the classical gold standard for uh, a central bank to exist. The U.S., during most of the period of the classical gold standard, did not have a central bank. We were the last um, industrial economy to set up a central bank. Great Britain established its central bank in uh, 1694 or so, mainly so the king could build palaces and fight wars. So central banks were initially creatures of government as they have remained. So the monetary unit uh, was, as I said, simply a, a weight unit of gold. So notice something here. The franc, the pound, the dollar are homogeneous monies. They're not separate monies. They are all gold. The, their names just denote a different weight of gold, a different unit in which the people in that nation um, calculated. But, but the, the money itself was gold.